Hi, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm so excited to finally be here with Adrian Waluju. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Flynn? I'm great really to be great. here finally. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying finally um, because we've been uh, we've been chatting about doing this for quite a long time. Um, I think since since August. Um, so yeah, so it's been quite a long time coming. Um, yeah. I think it was June today. Oh, was it at June? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think that's when we started talking, but yeah, it was a lot of things happening at that time. That is, that is, um, really long time. I'm just going to refresh my page, make sure we're streaming. We are streaming this out, right? Okay. You can see that I'm in a bar. Yeah. Okay. That's great. <laughs> Something buggy happening with YouTube, but yeah, here we are. Um, so it's been a long time coming. Um, and yeah, I've just been, I've been following you since then. I had just discovered your work like kind of in June and now I've just been rigorously following you, um, on, um, Instagram and just seeing like all your updates, like absolutely adore your illustration. Um, and excited for you to spend your time with us today. Um, and next week to teach us a little bit about, um, what you do and how you do it. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. No worries. It's my pleasure to be here as well. Um, yeah, thank you. That's really, it's really nice of you to say, <laughs> um, really flattering. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, um, Hey, we've got some lovely people in chat. We've got Festus, we've got Johanna looking after us. Thank you, Joe. Ash in the chat, R and B, um, Festus in the house, um, Mercurial, Misty, Sam. Hey, Sam. Great to see you. Samuel as well. Um, Daniel, good to see you. Um, if you are, yeah, watching this anywhere other than Behance, that's the live chat that we're going to be using today. Um, so if you have any questions, if you want to say hello, we'd love to know where you're from. Um, I'm in Sydney. Um, Adrienne is in Melbourne. Uh, let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. Um, we always love to see that, uh, see where we're reaching around the world. I'm going to get some music. Let's get some tunes happening. Um, and I thought maybe we could start by those that aren't um, maybe familiar with your work. Maybe we should have a look at some of your work first. And you can tell us a little bit about all the things you do because you're a UX and UI designer and illustrator and an animator. So how? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's really interesting how I even got into all of these things. Um, and if the Daniel that you mentioned is, is the really, he's, he used to be my tutor, but now I'm working with him. So oh. I, so he's one of the reasons why I started all this UI UX career. Mm -hmm. Um, so I graduated in RMIT in Melbourne as an animation student, but then I've only discovered about motion design after I finished uni, mm. because I, I think it was morally because like it focuses, my uni focused a lot on story based, like those Pixar or movies. And I didn't know that there is this intersection between graphic design, which I really loved and also storytelling. So, and then when I found motion design, it was really interesting. But in uni, I also did like this one subject, which is taught by like my my tutor, my dance tutor Daniel was, and another person called uh, Lindsay, and they were like introducing UI UX, and I thought, wow, this is really cool that I can use um, design and art and something beautiful for like functions and helping people. So I I really liked it, and I did well in that class. And interesting, like, and then I was pursuing more motion design, illustration, um, when. Basically, like I, they remembered, like I did so well that they gave me an opportunity to work in UI UX, and that's how yeah. I ended up <laughs> where I am right now. Right. Um, but yeah, I still love doing illustrations and motions, and it's just really, it's I'm really fortunate. Like at work, while I do UI UX, there's a lot, a lot of illustration aspect as well to it. So I really enjoyed um, doing all those things, especially since I think. I'm the kind of person who gets easily bored. So I actually enjoy doing different right. kind of things. At, yeah. Cool. So shake it up a little bit. Yeah. That's great that you can apply uh, something like illustration and animation to the UI and UX world. Cause of course, like everything moves now these days and we want everything to look good. So it does make, it does make sense. Like having, having those um, specific skills and I could see how a uh, UI and user experience company would really love to have someone like that with those skills to come in and, Add that extra flair, I think, to some of those prototypes and uh, and projects. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. Like um, a generalist, I think, a quite across few things. And yeah, and because I guess I really like minimalism, which is least effort to get the maximum impact. So I think it works really well with UI UX as well. Um, not 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 to mistake that for being simplistic, but I like simple things, even though the process behind that oftentimes is more complicated. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. 
That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, um, I have some of your work here. We're just going to jump over to your website and check it out. What do you think? Yeah, let's sure. Do, um, let's do that. My website is mostly illustration and motion work. So those are the projects that I've did. So if you like, um, and below that is more of illustration work that the landscape things that I did with Mixkit. So I, so it's, there's like five items for um, sceneries and there's, there's more free items for food. And just a note that this has been a while. I haven't updated my website, but just to show if there's any students or people who are starting out, this is my folio around one and a half years into the career. Wow. So yeah. Um, I remember when I first started uni, I, I had to do a lot of trials and error. I had to change my folio and my reel three times in six months because I just need to keep learning and see what works and what doesn't work. Right. So yeah, your folio is really important. Like no one has ever asked where I graduated from or asked to see my certificate. <laughs> it's all about it's all, always, it's all about the work. Yeah, like people just look at your work and even if it's your passion project. So um, the bottom left is a project that I did like with Care Australia. So mm-hmm. I've been doing some stuff with them. Oh, uh, no, like here. the one, the, the lady in the bike. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing work with Care Australia for two years in a row. So it's mm-hmm. more for charity and yeah, I'm just really, just really excited like to be able to use, like I said, use illustration for function and even for this to raise awareness and to raise fund for their Christmas charity program. And this was to give access to women in for medical purposes as well. Mm. And these stamps are just really passion projects. Like I just do them for fun. Um, yeah, I was like thinking I want to do like series of Australian animals and maybe Australia Post can print them. <laughs> but Let's like that's just something something that like what you want to see, but not really necessarily the real thing, but they are important so people know what you can do and what you can't do as well. And that's great. So it's like um, a mixture yeah. of like personal projects as well as like real life projects and maybe some some uni projects that you've expanded upon, you know, that so yeah. there's a big mixture of of different types of projects here which I think is really cool and something we can all learn from. Yeah, I guess like one of the things that I learned and a lot of people ask as well is that um, just put like you have to put the work that you want people to hire you for. So right. if it's like no one, no one really cares if it's a personal project or a client project, um, as long as they know that you can like we can produce that. So that's like really the important thing. I think that's really great. Advice. Of course, with client project, it shows that you have some certain degree of professionalism or how to handle clients, how to talk to the manage deadline. So that's also important. But mm. like in terms of technical skill, as long as you can produce them, like they are really happy. That's a really yeah. great. That's a really great point. Yeah. Um, and I think you have mm-hmm. a one minute show reel up here, so we might watch that before we get stuck into what we're going to do today. Yeah. So this is yeah my motion show reel. Um, because like I said, I had a background in animation. So it's interesting because I know a lot of people say that they go from illustration to motion, but I think I'm kind of going the other way around. Like I go from motion and then I focus more on illustration because that's what I I like the most. But I still like mm. doing adding motion, but not too complex. Um, one of the things is my in my list is like to learn more motion stuff from Ben, um, Ben Marriott. Oh, yeah. I've been talking to him for quite a bit and <laughs> he's just really cool. Like he has so many tutorials. I don't know how he has so many um, ideas for so many different types of... <laughs> well, like you, like you, I mean, you said you, you, you would explain to people that, you know, a year and a half out, this is, this is your portfolio, a year and a half out. And I look at that and think, wow, there's such a breadth of different work. Um, but, it, I, but I can also see your style at the same time. I think ben, Ben's the same. I think um, I look at his catalogue of all the tutorials and everything he's done. I just think, oh my gosh, how has he done so much in such a short amount of time? Um, it's very impressive. Yeah. Super so, yeah. cool. Um, and of course, we'll bring up Instagram as well. So um, definitely follow Adrienne um, on there. Look at that. That's us talking about today. That's awesome. If you came here uh, from an Instagram feed, thanks for joining us. Um, so mm-hmm. how about we get stuck into what we're going to do today? Yeah. Okay. So as I have promised everyone is that I'll be doing some illustration work. Um, so something, if any one of you have Adobe Illustrator, uh, you can follow along. And so what I did here, I'm just going to show you a little of my process on how I do illustration in Adobe Illustrator. 
So one of the reasons why I really like using Adobe Illustrator is because um, factor means that one of the problem with like a lot of client works is sometimes you need image really big or really small. And with factor illustration, what you can do with it is that you can resize it any size you want and it mm. won't pixelate. Those who use Photoshop will understand like how uh, annoying that is. But And also it's really good for motion design. And I think I use it more since I do more motion design because that's quite a standard in the industry. So what I usually do for my process is I have my sketch. So I did this in uh, my tablet using Adobe Fresco. Um, I really like how it looks really look like a pencil. So what I have usually is just like a sketch of generally like what the character looks like, what the composition overall. So start with a really small thumbnail. And then I just really manually um, imp- like put it into my computer. Mm-hmm. And so when you say yeah, manually so is- put it into your computer, you just like kind of screenshot it and then like email it or Dropbox it to yourself? Like how do you, how do you get it from iPad to Illustrator? If I use like Apple product, I use, um, what do you call it? I, I use AirDrop, yeah. so it's, it's really AirDrop. easy. It's or so if I use good. my phone and then I just uh, email them to me or just Facebook message, like I use Facebook Messenger to send it to me so it's easier. Yeah. So I don't clutter my, because at one point my email inbox is just my sketches attachment all, all over the place. And right. It feels very messy. <laughs> So I started using Facebook Messenger to send things through my different devices. Um, but yeah, like it's really like I, I even like sometimes draw on pa- paper because I think sometimes paper and pencil is just the best and just mm. put it here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then what I do is like I'll put it in a layer and then just name it sketch and then put it into a 30% opacity so that I can still see it. Um, and then just lock that. It's just interesting, like when you start streaming yourself, you forget even how to lock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's always, that's the always the way it's, it's streaming is a little bit like someone looking over your shoulder, just kind of watching you as you're, as you're going through. Yeah. It's like, because a lot of the things like I've been doing quite naturally and it's like yeah. muscle memory. So when you have to think about it, you just forget. Totally. So okay, what I do is I use the, I've had color palette selected here. Um, this is one of the things that you have to do trial and error. Like for this one, I kind of prepare for it. So what I usually do is as well, I can go to Pinterest, I look at color palette, um, or I use color palette that I know have worked in the past and just kind of adjust it. And that's what I did for this one. Mm. Um, and okay, and like, so I'm just gonna use pen tool. Um, pen tool, I use, I remember I, I was learning how to use pen tool and I get really scared of it because it's just so, unpredictable but it's become my best friend now <laughs> um and yeah so i'm just using this rectangle actually and taking the corner here and just there you go face there we go quick face yeah um i tried like today like i tried to use a lot of basic um geometry so mm. that it's just really simple like i feel like I'll use a bit of pencil, but nothing too fancy. I won't make any wave or anything too curvy. But one of the really easy thing if you're animating something is to break things down to basic shapes. And I think mm. in a lot of things, um, a lot of illustrator will say that it's the silhouette and things like that. But as for me, I like because it looks simple mm. and, and it can be quite cute as well. Yeah, it was definitely one of my questions because yeah um is is how you built it up and if you did use a brush because yeah i would notice that it was you know like, not always symmetrical or anything but it was clearly like a, yeah geometric kind of style style to the work yep um and hey i should um, mention um if you're new here uh we're doing q a midway so that doesn't mean that you can't ask questions now um feel free to ask any questions that you want throw them in chat uh we tend to um try to sort of stick to the process um, and but in Q and A, you might have questions about freelancing, uh, learning, um, you know, after effects or animation or, um, you know, getting work, whatever it might be. So um, feel free to throw those in the chat and that's what the Q and A is for. I love hearing about like someone we have on the stream learn that learned from somebody else that comes on the stream. Like it's so nice to hear that you've, you know, learned from Ben Marriott. 
Um, and I've heard that he's learned from so many other people as well. It's so great that we can all learn from each other and people are, people are just, especially these days, putting out so much of their process online, um, like how they did things. Yeah. Like right now you're here, you're showing us your process. Um, is that something that you've, you've been doing a lot? I wish I could do it more because I think to prepare a good but I've tried, like, I usually just give like a time lapse, but not really an explanation of why I do things, which I think can be valuable as well. But yeah, I wanted to do that um, in the future if I have more time. Um, because there's this one time I did a toucan, toucan, this um, tropical bird, and I just yeah. put like a time lapse of how I did it in my Instagram. And then there's this uh, girl in Hong Kong. She just came back from like the pandemic, so started the semester, and her first lesson is like you can draw anything, and she decided to draw based on that video. But it was like a four times speed time lapse. She said that she was so tired at the end of that, but she was really happy because she could um, recreate it. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could do something more, um, more easy to follow. And a lot of people ask for tutorials and things like that, and I just haven't had time. Because I guess I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Like I, I can't just create something, and if I'm not happy with it, like I'm, like I can't. Yeah, but I would want to. Um, ben is just like such an educator on this, yeah. and it's really cool. And he's like he's not shying away from showing how people, how he does things. And mm. yeah, I re I'm really glad. Like I feel like this is a really great time to be a digital illustrator because there's so many resources online that you can mm. learn other, other yeah. than um other than ben which we mentioned a couple of times is there any is there any other resources that you would recommend to people like is it just sort of searching um, things on youtube or have you ever done like a like a short course like skillshare or something like that or any any advice for people out there i think for motion especially there's a few probably like motion design school and school of school of motion mm -hmm. the thing they're just i haven't tried them myself i haven't had the time but like i've heard that they're really good um in terms of because they're really specific and they are taught by industry expert so and another like another resource is not 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 exactly a um technical in illustration but it's the future oh yeah do you know christo christo yep. yeah yeah he's just he really opens up a lot of things about the business side of mm. freelancing as a creator for me personally. Mm. And what he shares is really valuable because I think a lot of us, when we come from uni, no one really teaches us that like we are, we are not being taught how to think regarding how to see ourselves in this digital age. And a lot of artists tend to compare themselves and they get really stressed when they go to the online space and they see all this amazing stuff and mm. we get really stressed about it or a lot of artists get burned out and things like that so like, i think that's also important as a as a creative to learn not just the technical skill but also how to see ourselves as an artist in this time and age mm. yeah absolutely what do you think lynn <laughs> what do you think you've had a lot of guests um, <laughs> I, I think that I, I think that's very common i think um I mean, I was around before Instagram and everything like that and kind of the wave of Instagram coming up, um, you know, the thought that you could go to sleep and then wake up in the morning and then open an app and then you can see some of the most amazing design or illustration work that you've ever seen in your entire life that has all happened while you've been asleep. It can, it can definitely get to you. Like I think um, it's one of those things where the barrier to entry now is really low um, as you said, mm -hmm. it's a great time to, to learn digital skills because there's information out there. Um, if you dedicate a little bit of time to it, you can you can learn anything, pretty much. Um, yeah. But that also means that there's a lot there's a lot more out there. So I think um, that kind of it's a bit of a double edged sword. Yeah. That's what I hear from a lot of friends, and it's not it's not exclusive to a specific industry. Um, it's from architects to designers oh, wow. to people in branding and 3d and motion and everything yeah well i'm quite surprised to hear about art architect as well yeah it's, i mean i think it's the i think it's the the digital world of the algorithm it's whatever you're interested in um if it's a creative field uh you know it, it's what you're fed you know mm. 
what's really great about it, I think it's also like the digital aspect of it also brings, exposes other creatives from other countries that we perhaps wouldn't mm. hear about if it's not for that. So many talented people across the world and it's just amazing. And I found it really interesting how different countries, different area has different aesthetic taste. Mm. And yeah, that's like, I feel per- perhaps previously it was dominated more on the Northern North America, mm. um, but now it's getting spread out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, here we are in, here we are in APAC and got, like people from India, Indonesia, all over. Um, and it's really great because obviously we get to learn from each other and learn a little bit more about each other's cultures and how it can impact their work, the work style, the work kind of the, even just the day to day, um, I think can be, can be mm-hmm. quite different depending on where you're like geographically located and, um, all the other factors that come in. Yep. Do we know who, do we know if like which countries do we have at the moment? Is there anyone in the chat? Like yeah, let us know. Indian. Let us know where you guys are. I'm scrolling up. Let's check it out. Um, I definitely saw someone from LA before, which is cool. Uh, it's a good time yeah. for streaming in in the US, um, particularly if you pop if you watched um, um, Jesus and Claudie's uh, live stream before, which is awesome. Kind of stick around. Yeah, Samuel was from LA. That's super cool. Geelong, Peter. Great to see. Oh, great to see you, Peter. Lovely to see you again. But yeah, where are you all at? Ace is from California. Cool. Been using Animate to do animation. Interested to see what can be done with Illustrator. Yeah. Um, different kind of process, I think, to using um, Animate. So hopefully you learn something here. Oh, Animate, yeah, that's, that's more free. Yeah, I. <laughs> that's like another set of skill as well. I use mostly use a factor animation. It's more... Um, yeah, it's, I guess it's more controlled in that sense, but the principle of animation is the same across. I did 3D animation in uni just so that I know that I've tried it before. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, like I'm interested to go as well in 3D animation, but it's more stylized rather than the photorealistic right. um, 3D animation. It's really cute. Like the one day, like I think Buck, Buck Studio did for Backquest. I really love it. It's mm. really cute. Have you seen that one? No, I don't think so. I know Buck the studio pretty well, but yeah. no. What what yeah, are you referring to? Is like a, a video? A Bankwest, like they did like a brand, like a three D illustrations and ad for Bankwest. A year. Oh, the oh the new, ad, the ads new ads that are out now in Australia. Yeah, those ones. Those three D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I didn't realize Buck did those. Those are super cool. Yeah, um, maybe I, Johanna could dig because... those up. We'll do some free advertising for Bankwest. <laughs> um, but uh... quite done, just dropping names. <laughs> <laughs> Bankwest not, is not sponsoring not this, Bankwest. this video, but it is incredible, isn't it? Like it's very hard. It's very difficult to get people's attention online these days. Um, like I think it's like one of the most valuable things that we have is our time because everyone's screaming at us um, for yeah, their time. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're talking about an ad for a bank. Like um, it really does show. Uh, the value of creativity, I think, and like really good craftsmanship. Um, and yeah. I, I don't watch much TV, but I actually know the ad you're talking about. So um, we'll see if we can track that down. We'll share it in chat. Um, and do a free ad for a bank. Do a free ad for a bank. <laughs> uh, Massachusetts, Jessica's from Massachusetts. So nice to have you, love, Mass. Um, Andy from Mexico. So cool. Festus is from Wellington, New Zealand, of course. So yeah, like what I'm doing here right now is just, um, it's really symmetrical in some part and I'll diversify in certain bits, but Mm. say for this lake, I just created one and then I can just copy them and mirror them. I'll perhaps still need to adjust them, but like a lot of the elements are reusable. Mm. And so you're kind of working in outlines now. Um, so is this, um, would this process be any different? Uh, Cause we're going to be talking about animation um, next week. So mm-hmm. um, just so everybody knows this is kind of part one. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about, uh, you know, about animation right now, but we're going to be in after effects um, this time next week when we kind of do part two. Um, so going back to my question, there is a question eventually mm-hmm. um, is, is your process any different when you're not planning to animate 
or would you do you no, always actually, do this geometric kind of framework? It's always the same. Mm. Yeah, it's always the same because I work from sketches, which is an outline, and it's easier for me to see which part overlaps and which doesn't. Um, and it's yeah. So this is like where all the everything looks really funny. It's just shapes overlapping with shapes, and then it gets really fun when you start coloring and putting things in. That's really where the magic happens. Like, oh, now it's a finished scene. But yeah, yeah like for everything that I do in Illustrator, this is my process. Cool. Um, yep. Also, shout out Golden Rose from Maryland and Martha from Detroit, Michigan. So cool. Love having you guys wow. with us. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon or your morning or your midday with us. Let us know if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, Martha said in chat, I'm working on an illustration in um, Illustrator tonight, planning on taking it into After Effects. I'm a beginner in After Effects. That's awesome because um, that's the beginning yeah. of the project that we're doing today. So let mm -hmm. us know if you have any questions. Maybe we can help you out. Not me. Adrian's going to help you out. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's if if anyone is following this, it's I'm like you can see like I'm really using I barely even use the pen tool. I think I mm. use mostly the shapes and then just playing around with the corner like this. Like this is really useful feature that I really like. Yeah. So for those that may have missed it, or if you're watching on a small screen or something, when you're creating like a, a square or triangle or another shape, um, you can just pull in the corners. It's sometimes a bit hard to see on the stream. Um, but if you bring it mm. up, it's just kind of on the inside and it's just so, so valuable. Um, especially yeah. I think with, yeah, rounding corners out. Um, I think it was Steve jobs that said there's no such thing as a perfectly sharp corner. Um, mm. so that's why so many of the Apple products always had round corners because you just, you know, if you, even if you get into a really micro detail, it's not actually perfect. Um, so we shouldn't design things that way. There you go. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, wow. He's definitely he's definitely one of those people that has really innovative innovative way of looking at things. Yeah. And yeah. I was watching with my now husband like the first time iPhone was launched and like just the presentation and I remember like how zooming in and zooming out and scrolling was such a big thing back then. So it's yeah. just really cool to do that again. Like a lot of the things we take for granted at this point. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it was like, it was really something, um, it was a breakthrough in 2007, I think. Um, yeah. Also, you're starting to bring in some, some color here. So I'm sure lots of people are going to be very interested in your color because your color palette is beautiful. Um, so is it a bit of trial, trial and error? Um, you have like a, a very wide color palette like there's lots of colors to choose from there so so why did you you yeah. know why are you making the decisions you're making now um <laughs> let's see um for the for this this is going to go to the background so it's kind of like this is actually even though it looks a lot because a lot of them are actually a shade of each other oh, okay. but they're actually more of a spring natural color mm. so you see all this um yellow and green they are really fresh and spring oriented even though it's summer now but um for the skin i usually what i do is like when i choose a color i go down to a warmer i need to memorize the name of these different things but i go down in the in the selector and then i choose something more red rather than just something more dark because it right. gets really muddy when you do that um, but to be honest, like for me, I think it's a lot of trial and error and yeah. And it takes a while, like to choose your color, it takes a while. That's why for today, I kind of prepared that beforehand because I know if I have to choose my color and draw it at the same time, it's going to take um, longer, like an extra 20 minutes, I think. Right. Usually. Yep. And I guess that comes back to, yeah, the idea of time. Um, I know it's a difficult kind of question to answer because it changes quite a lot but how long you know if you could give a ballpark figure would you spend on I guess an illustration that's just going to be an illustration and then also an illustration that you will animate what's the ballpark kind of time 
Um, I'd say two to three hours, again, depending on the complexity. I think one of the hardest part is not actually doing what I'm doing right now, which is just like, that's why I can talk to you and chat to you because I've done the mental work before that, which is mm. sometimes the hardest part is not the illustration bit, but it's actually thinking about the idea, the composition, the character design. So the illustration itself, like the process, can take to three, four, five, I think. Um, yeah, three to four hours, I think, would say, for a simple animation, simple illustration without a lot of gradient, without a lot of texture. Mm. Yeah. One of those things, one of those questions when the answer is never really an exact number because I know like people yeah. I like to ask things, it depends. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I mean, that is the answer, right? Like, just kind of chatting about it and um, kind of expanding mm -hmm. on expanding on the question. But it's an unanswerable kind of question, of course, because um, the more you do in your style, the more fast paced you you will have gotten and how you you know what you're looking for a little bit more. Um, so obviously, the more you practice at something, the, the faster your process will be. Mm. Yeah, deadline helps. If you know you have to finish something better than time, it does <laughs> help make you faster. Always. Everything's always, always. last minute. <laughs> um, a question that I was watching uh, one of the US streams recently, I thought it was a really great question to ask illustrators. Do you think of a backstory of the characters that you're creating? Like, do you have a backstory about this person? Are they traveling to work? Are they coming home from work? Is it the weekend? Like, do you think about that? Or do yeah. you just create? Um, for this one, I, I do think about it. And I think it's like the idea behind this. I think I was I was supposed to go to Japan for a holiday this, um, this year, but obviously because of what happened, it didn't happen. Uh, one of the things that I really like and I enjoyed is their train rides. Mm. And I was thinking about, um, like, especially one of the things, and I guess a lot of us perhaps missed is also the travel and just enjoying the train rides, listening to your music or podcast, and just going shopping. I really like going to grocery I really enjoy grocery shopping. I really like going to Asian grocery shopping and see all those snacks. and. Mm. I miss that a lot and I guess that's reflected in the illustration that I picked today. It's more about those everyday simple things that they really enjoy and and I think it's like a theme in my life. I try to enjoy all the simple and little things but they're actually really precious and um, like yeah, you, like even though it's not it's not luxurious or it's not it's not anything rare, but it's something that I really am thankful for mm. in general. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, it's like those yeah, little things is... that, that make make up life, right? Yeah, like it's going to, when during the pandemic, like, oh, I want to go to, um, why do I keep dropping names? And I didn't realize how much I do this, but going to Bunnings and, <laughs> and just buying furniture and doing DIY and this, at this one point, like in Melbourne, we had we can't go any more than five kilometers. Yeah, and it was really hard because there's nothing except for supermarket in that. But I know like some people like in say the regional area, they don't even have things within the five kilometers, so it's even harder for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess this is like a mix of like those train in Japan. Because one of the really cool things when you ride the bullet train is you can see sceneries when you travel between cities. And I mm. really enjoyed that. You can look at rice fields, you can look at ocean, you can look at Fuji Mountain if you are in that area. And yeah, I really enjoy looking at the ocean as well. Um, and I was like talking to this other illustrator and they say that whatever you like will be reflected in your illustration usually. Mm. And the other illustration illustrator he really likes clouds and you can always see a lot of clouds in his work right yeah is your okay. is your artwork always very positive what does that mean <laughs> like she's happy she's doing the thing that you know you want to be doing so like a bit um 
yeah so is it always is it always very positive like it's a positive experience like with bright bright colors and um you know coming from a happy place have you ever like illustrated anything kind of i don't want to say morbid or anything but yeah is it always so so positive i think i think so yeah, yeah. i think that's what i'm aiming is like when people look at it they feel happy as well so because mm. i guess this is something that you can like another magic that an illustrator can do is like it can bring you to places that you can't in real life so i don't remember the last time i drew anything exactly sad I think. yeah not that i've never felt sad obviously but what i drew is quite cheerful and peaceful mm. and i get really touched when people like message me and say that they feel um they feel at peace when they look at it and there's this student in the states she like we had like a video call because she is doing some uni projects to interview illustrator mm. and she's saying that when she feels down she goes to my profile to look at my stuff and just reading the caption the story behind the work and that's why i put a lot of effort in my work as well because i know that it can perhaps um, make someone stay even though yeah. it's just one person yeah absolutely um, hey, there's a really good question here from Johanna. Do you do any sketching on public transport? I guess either before um, you know, this year or currently. I I get really dizzy when I do that. But I what I do in public transport is I plan what I wanted to draw. <laughs> right. So I think about scenes. I think about stories. I think about like I browse through um other people's work uh mood board photograph so it's kind of like more brainstorming rather than sketching because i get right. um busy to, when doing that mm. yeah that's cool and so would you be sort of making notes or you're just thinking about you know just kind of drifting off listening to i think you said podcasts before and just kind of mm -hmm. just, just you know thinking about it like in your head or, or do you make notes or anything like that um, I depending if I'm making like say something like a comic like a story I usually write it down on my notes app mm. so I don't forget because like oh this is a really good idea or sometimes when I see someone with a really cool fashion sense I write down what they wear and then mm. oh yeah that's another thing that I really love in public transport is you see all these people with good fashion sense and they become inspiration for your um, illustration yeah that's cool um, yeah Johanna's mentioned someone in chat. Me yeah, we've got. Oh, sorry, go on. I don't know. Like, just someone told me that just be observant of the things around you. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's something that I'm trying to do. People watching in a not creepy way, though. <laughs> not taking photos, taking notes. Um, taking notes in my head. <laughs> yeah. So we've got about 15 minutes to QA. We might do it a little bit faster, uh, a little bit earlier than that. Yeah. So 10, 15 minutes. Um, so get your questions in. Um, so again, if you or well, if you're just joining us now, um, the chat that we're using is at um, behance.net slash live. Um, so we're using that one. So if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, jump over to that chat, drop your question in. Um, we'll be asking it in about 10 minutes. Let's see, we've got a bunch of questions coming through already, which is great. Hopefully I can. Um, and this is what it looks like so far. I'm um, just turning off the sketch to see how it works. Amazing. So this is more kind of like the basic building blocks and then we'll keep building upon that and trial and error. Mm. And I always like using the rounded stroke. I think for a similar reason to Steve Jobs. I'm just gonna quote him now. Um, I just really like how soft it looks when it's round. Yeah, I'm all about the round corners. Um, and I try to use avoid a hard black, like um, because I think someone else also said this. There is no such thing as something that is completely black in real life mm -hmm. or completely white in real life. So either I use really light gray, I or use like really darkened brown for something. But I avoid using um, I avoid using really black unless that's what's the style is and, and that's what I'm going for mm. yeah and do you ever get like a client request um, 
or you know a brief or anything where they ask you to use a particular color palette or are you yeah. almost always oh you do yep definitely um especially if i'm creating like brand illustration like i'll ask them like what's your color palette for the brand and then i try to work from that exact um color so mm. that it's it's on brand basically um and then i ask are they fine with me just trying to use a, dif- a few different shades but also parent like it's like it's sourced from the same um color palette mm. yeah. it's very common for them unless they really come for like a piece where they they like my work and they just want what i'm more about the object rather than the color itself yeah um yeah how do most people discover you, do you think? Is it is it probably through Instagram? I think so. Instagram yeah. mostly. Um, yeah, so that's... Yeah, it's really surprising how a lot of things that I do kind of like started because I post more mm. on Instagram and just I guess sharing my work. Because early before I work full-time now, it's like I... I join like Facebook groups and then I just like there are people who share their works and I just share my work even though and I was just really surprised to see how people responded to like positively and um and I learned that sometimes you have to just take a chance and expose yourself more and even though your work is not perfect but to to begin somewhere you have to show it to someone yeah um and that's like o- online where I use hashtags to let people. If I, if I try to think for someone who is looking for something, I'll try to think like what kind of hashtag that they will be searching for. Mm. But I know a lot of this is what I heard after doing more of this is like a lot of art director also uses like follow certain hashtags to see and discover new artists mm. because that's what they like doing. Yeah. For sure. So it's very interesting to see your process here, just going back to everything we've watched. And for those that may have joined us since the beginning is starting with these like really geometric shapes, kind of built everything up, like almost built the foundation and the kind of the structure of everything. And then you've come back through, like rounded the corners, changed the colors and also tweaked them quite a lot. So, you know, the eyes, for example, were a half, like, you know, semicircle, um, but you've kind of shrunk mm-hmm. them just a little bit. So is, is that a bit of just trial and trial and error? Just trying to make sure. And are you trying to make it not geometric anymore from here? Uh, I was not. <laughs> Sorry, that was a two part. Hard. That was a two part question. <laughs> is it just trial <laughs> and error? I think at this stage, we'll just we'll, we'll ask that one. It's um, so like the building blocks. I can actually when I press Control Y, you can still see Great. Um, the the shapes. Mm-hmm. So this is really helpful as well when I try to click on shapes that's inside something. So because it's really hard sometimes when you want to click something that's here but you can't see them. When you do that, you can see the wireframes of everything and you can click on that. Um, but yeah, like so what I like if someone just came, like what I did is just building everything using just the strokes and then giving fills and let's see what works better, like how to give more life, give more variation to these basic shapes. Um, yeah, because now it, everything looks more fleshed out. It's easier to see how you can improve this piece. Mm. For this instance, like I just darken it a bit so that it gives an idea of like a shadow because your ears are not on the same plane exactly as your face. So that's mm. what I did, just adding different depth to it. I feel it's a bit too muddy, so I'm just gonna And this is another thing that I learned this year, I think, is what I did usually is when I want to add like a blush is I mask things and then it was really tedious. But now I know that you can press on this and then whatever you draw will stay inside. And that's really... What did you press on? Can you show us again? So, yeah, when I click on this, like whatever shapes that I want to be like the... What do you call Like the stencil, like something that's going to... I'll just do this again. Like if I want to put like this circle limited by this, um, I can just copy this, 
click on this and then click on this thing called draw inside or shift D. Mm -hmm. And you can't see that this is the same color. Oh, because it's the same color. So it's yep. going to go inside. Yeah, so it kind of ma it masks it. Yeah, it's masked it like, but it's like much simpler because masking usually like you have to put things on top of something and then you mm. have to press this and that. And But this is really simple because you can keep editing them as well. And yeah, this is one really cool feature that... That's great. I don't know if it's new or not, but I just discovered it recently. And this is why I think I have to follow more tutorials because sometimes they have new features and all this, um, the UI and the software engineers are probably working really hard and then we don't find them. We don't, we are not using them properly. <laughs> Ab absolutely. Absolutely. It happens, happens all the time um, uh, here on live. And I think it's one of the values of, of it being live is that we can just like kind of say, hey, oh, hey, like, how did you do that? And then um, people in chat may not have seen that, seen that, you know, button before as well and it might help them with their process even though it wasn't the ultimate goal was you know a video about, about that button um but yeah seeing workflow yeah. like like that 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 could hopefully help someone let us know in chat is that something that you didn't know about that you might use be super curious Siobhan says love that trick there we go super cool This is a really nice thing that I like to create like this, oops, this um, seams. So just using the stroke mm. and yeah, and let's make bread. Those we get. Yeah, I really enjoy it. This is like the part that I really like because I've done the concept work and I've mm. done the color palette and I can listen to podcast or I'll talk to a friend on a phone because I don't have to really think a lot. It's mm. just mostly um, drawing and trial. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Look at that. I really like the cute bread. It looks really round. Um, yeah. And so like this is the foreground. So let's go to the... Like notice I haven't even been using the sketch layer because I have had that done. Mm. Um, now I can just do this and so this is a really good practice as well to separate things into different layers so that you don't accidentally click on something. Um, and then let's do the scenery at the back. So I've tried doing that. So I think that might be a good spot for us to take a little, take a little Q and A break, answer some of these questions and then we'll jump back in. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I'm just going to bring us up. So we'll go away from your desktop so if you want you can bring that window up if you want on your side mm -hmm. so you can see us mm -hmm. um but yeah we've got some great questions that have come through so i'll answer a couple um before we get back into it um let me check it out um question from steve have you ever used the capture app on your phone to take pictures of colors or cool things while you are walking around i've heard about that but i haven't actually heard about um, it but haven't yet <laughs> yeah i think i've seen someone else used it is that is that a new thing or is that has been a while it's been around it's been for a while actually while. yeah but it's it's, pr it's pretty cool um but yeah it's a great way to kind of get like a quick little color palette and um bring it into projects there we go something to try out um andre says uh i hope i pronounced that correctly greetings from indonesia is there a reason why you chose minimus or you choose minimalist styles for your design rather than elaborate and detailed forms mm. I, I think it's just a different approach and different style. Like because for some projects I do like adding a lot of textures, and I don't know if you remember like in my website where I did the landscape or mm. not the landscape, sorry, the full illustration. It's a lot of details there, but generally I like minimalism because there's a challenge in how do I put the minimum number of strokes and elements, but still it looks beautiful and it still conveys the message. Because that's also a challenge, I think. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's not just what to add, but what to take out. Yeah. I and I like that. And um, yeah, I just I just like the idea of it's quite um, cheeky in that sense. Like I just like that um, mm. way of challenging myself. Yeah. I want. I wonder if your experience in design also plays a part in that because that's a big part of the design process is to you know as, sim as simple as possible um, to communicate. Mm. Like, so may maybe there's a little bit of the Venn diagrams crossing over there. Um, I had a question you mentioned, this is, I'm sneaking my own question in here um, about posting on Instagram. How often w 
would you post? Because you, you mentioned once you started putting yourself out there and doing more and more, there was this feedback loop um, that was really positive for you. So how often, how often are you like posting and illustrating? I think in the past when I was, so I was interning at this, sorry, I pressed something back. Soon. So I was interning and I thought like I had so much, um, like a lot of the time, like I finish work and everything and I don't have time for personal projects. So I try to set myself every day during that time is just to spend at least one to two hours just producing something, finishing something. It doesn't have to look perfect, just something that to keep the creative juice going and flowing um but as as we get busier i think i try to post two or three times a week but even like during busy times i don't post at all because yeah you don't want to put pressure on yourself to the point that it became a chore and it became stressful for you and but yeah like it's definitely there's a correlation when you post more and you engage more but of mm-hmm. course when you post you have to post something that you um you like like, like if you're not happy with it, like don't force yourself to post it. But mm. I guess it depends. Do you want people when they come to your Instagram to see what you can do, or do you want to just practice? If you if you're just doing it for practice, don't stress yourself too much. But if it became your folio, I think you have to become more selective of what you post, mm. yeah. so they know if 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 people want to hire you from Instagram, they know what to expect from your work. Okay? Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, Jessica has a question. Um, how did you find your design style? Uh, anything? It's a, it's a million dollar question, I think, um, with illustrators, and it is such a beautiful <laughs> style. Um, and did anything uh, did anything influence it, or did it come organically? Um, both uh, for the last part, because I think when I when I was like really little, I was born in Indonesia. I think some people already know that, and. I think my generation just a lot, a lot of us watch and are re- really influenced by Japanese animation. Mm-hmm. And I think growing up, I I gravitate towards that illustration when I draw naturally. But then when I finish uni, one of the things that I realize is, it's I think like in a, maybe if if I'm in Japan, that's a, a whole different reason. But I'm in Australia now, and I find that I have to change my style in a sense to suit more commercial needs. So right. from there, I start to experiment more and try different way of proportions and try different ways of um, different ways of expressing my illustration so in a sense that and then I arrive where I, what in whatever I have right now is because of that because I because obviously you can still see the say the Japanese animation influence but at the same time it has evolved since then so but how I got here it's kind of organic but my conscious effort to change my style so it was kind of i did i was conscious when i was doing that mm. during that time cool You're and i'm sure both. that so, yeah mm. but i'm sure like i'm gonna keep changing my style because i think as long as you live you'll see all these different things you get inspired by all these different things and it's gonna affect the way your work looks like mm. and depending on your clients as well because some clients want more of this more more of complex more minimalist and yeah it's great yeah and um, I think mm-hmm. I think it's really good. Uh, do you have any any like what can you suggest for beginners that might not have defined their style yet? Um, focus on what you want to convey, like the story that you want to convey, rather than the execution, because the content is the drive for your illustration. And when you know a message or a story that you strongly want to convey, it doesn't have to be anything big like a social cause like it's good but like you can also even like a personal story like what i shared today is like a really simple scene in a in a train in a a mix with like a really big window which is not i've never seen that in any train but um and then when you want you when you know what you want to tell the story you want to tell you'll get there like you'll find a way on how to convey that the best and I think that's the easiest way rather than because like when I stress, like there's this one time I was so stressed about my style because of the reason that I mentioned to you. Mm. But then like I start to focus like, okay, I want to make this for animation, like what style is suitable and like you'll find a way to get there because style is just a way of executing a story. So that's, yeah. So don't, don't stress about the style itself. Focus on the story that you want to tell. That's, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. I really like that. Um, and sort of in a follow up almost question for a question from Andre, um, your characters are so cute 
Uh, do you often f often see yourself through your characters? We talked a little bit about that, but yeah, do you see yourself in some of the characters you you create? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I have friends that says that it looks like you, so <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I didn't intend to do that. Um, I just I really enjoy looking at those. Um, I like I enjoy other people's fashion because I don't know why I, myself I like drawing people in really nice clothes, but I don't shop that much myself. Maybe that's like an expression. <laughs> of the style that I want to have. You want to be shopping more. But, more shopping. Mm, <laughs> shopping more. <laughs> and I project that onto my illustrations. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't consciously do that, but I think somehow it just, I think it's just a thing, like when you create something, like whatever you are, it's kind of there. And I think usually people who identify it more is my friends because I, I guess they know me personally. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one or two more questions and then we'll jump back in. So... Um, what uh, Ashley's Ashley asked, uh, what other career paths did you consider before choosing art, or did you always know? Oh, actually, um, interestingly, before I, I was like I was studying in Singapore before this, and I didn't touch art at all because it was just circumstances and everything. But um, so when I came back to Australia, when when I moved to Australia, I was like a lot of all those units they require folio, so I didn't think about considering art as like a career i was going to take psychology and economy economy a double major in in uni and i was accepted and everything but my parents were the one who told me don't you like drawing which is really surprising because they have been so supportive and they're such a major role um in my life and especially in my career but yeah i really enjoy social um psychology human behavior because humans are just interesting like you you can never tell what they're gonna do and i wanted to work like in a policy making in governments <laughs> which is really interesting because i like how understanding how humans react what, what humans need and then how do we then create policy so that it's people can receive it well so i guess that sympathy aspect is still um key in my work as well mm. but i really enjoy that um working in public space yeah, I love really, that. I, really, I, I, really different. That's pathway. the first time. I think yeah. that's the first time I've heard anybody tell the story about um, where their parents push them more towards the the creative, the creative arts or, or design or commercial design, and away from something like being a doctor or you know anywhere anywhere in medicine or a scientist or something like that. So, mm -hmm. um, economist, um, psychologist, anything like that. So that is very interesting to yeah. hear. One more question. Um, yeah. Do you mix it up using mouse and pad and pencil, or do you have a favorite tool between the two? What do you oh, use? What are you like using today? Just, just mouse, just like my, yeah. my mouse. Um, I don't know why, I kind of like mouse because it feels more controlled and you feel more deliberate when, when you're clicking. Mm -hmm. And I guess it depends on the kind of the fact that you're looking for. If you're looking for clean, I kind of like mouse better. <clears throat> for sketching, I do like, obviously, tablet or pencil, but for factory illustration, I like mouse. Mm -hmm. So everyone can do it without if, if they don't have the tablet even. Cool. Yeah, I think that's really great. Um, Siobhan, I, sorry, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, um, was asking if we could show that paste inside trick again. So yeah, I think that was quite a hit. So maybe we'll, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, maybe we can jump back yeah, over um, and we'll check it out and you can show us one more time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Are we doing that now or after this? Yeah, we'll, we'll jump in now. I think that's that's Q&A part over. We have 25 minutes left to spend on the illustration. Wow. Uh, I'm just jumping okay. back over to your desktop now so we can see <clears throat> Yep, we can see the illustration again. Um, and I'll just let you all okay, know as well, even though our official Q&A section um, is over, please don't hesitate to throw your questions in um, while we are very lucky um, to be here with you all. So for the, say like you have a shape that you, and you want something inside of that and then let's create a square and let's put the yellow and then just um, cut this. So I'm just command X and what I do is like you click on the shape that you want to be um, as the, the mask and then you click this thing in the panel which is called draw inside. So it's really straight, like it's really straightforward. I, I forgot who taught me this but you click draw inside and then when you paste it, so it's actually just moving, like it will only show as much as the shape is kind of like guarding. Great. Such a great. Yeah. And great you can like trip. double click it. 
and just change it around and you can add more things even where you're inside there you go such yeah. a great such a great so tip that's <laughs> super cool yeah you know it changed my life as well <laughs> i think you may have helped like quite a few people out with that one so thanks for sharing no worries i'm so glad <laughs> if anyone can be helped by that and yeah okay let's do the scenery and i might have to uh, this is another thing that i've just learned like a few months ago during one of those adobe um design challenge mm -hmm. i think it was a hot dog um uh, andrew, andrew hotradell yeah yeah and he was showing this thing called curvature tool so in the past like when we do so I'm just like working on this uh, layer. So I just lock the character so it's not gonna move when I click it. So like in the past, like what I do is like when I make wave, I have to do this. And I think it's quite painful to make a nice looking wave. But with this, you can just click it in a straight line, but then it will automatically create a wave for you. So it's really cool and it's, I'm just actually, I'm not even clicking anything. I'm just clicking like different points. So you're basically just clicking like a zigzag, of... but it's curving it for you in a very natural way. Yeah. Yes. So it's also another thing that I really love. So this this is like why you have to try different tools and not just use the same tools that if you, you've been using in 2010, <laughs> because they have new things um, in store for you. So yeah, I'm just going to create this and you can change it up with still the pen tool because it's the, it's the same basic super cool yep bunch of people in chat saying um yep that's a new new trick for them the um drawing inside so that's awesome yeah yeah i'm so glad that this case so i think um we should Sorry. sort of mention that um the animation that you're planning on doing to this later will be a par parallax. And the reason I'm sort of mentioning it now is maybe we could chat a little bit about what that is and um, and sort of what you're planning here. Because as, as I'm seeing the layers coming, I'm thinking maybe we should chat about what a parallax animation is. Um, and mm -hmm. and yeah, and just yeah. So parallax. So parallax. Um, so one of the animation that we're going to go into next week it's called this parallax effect where depending like you can have this illusion of death based mm. on the speed of things that you're changing so like to explain that really clearly when you're on a train um say like the sea here and the, like the hills that are closer to you they have different speed like the sun will always stay the same or the, the sea will always stay the same but you feel like the electric pole and everything is keep moving and you can see there's different depth and we are trying to recreate that in after effects by having all these different layers of things and they're going to be moving at different speed so it's going to try to imitate what you see when you're on motion when you're looking onto the horizon right um so yeah that's a really simple way of adding life and adding kind of I like creating this scenic and atmospheric animation. Um, and one of the things that I really want to learn is creating more character that is more dynamic, but I really enjoy adding this subtle movement that adds um, mood to an illustration. Cool. And yeah, so this is... Yeah, so this is... Um, like I just created these three, three simple shapes and then let's create clouds. Just adding something more bright. I feel like cloud is just so just a lot of circles. Geometric shapes coming back. Yep. I guess adding a lot of circle usually makes something cuter as well. <laughs> That's what happened. I want them to be fluffy, fluffy clouds. It's not a really simple scenery <laughs> and I just group that together and I click on this and then do the draw inside thing. Draw inside. To see how it looks. Coming back yeah. again. 
like I just paste that into the draw inside mode and then now we have this yeah cool and I'll just what else did I and now I'm just adding more details like the let's see the sketch like so what I also like to create is I think that's what what you say was correct like regarding like my design affecting I like this having like this negative space like this say like a floor so yeah it's perhaps that the design influence that my lecturer used to say that don't forget about the negative space sometimes like just because there's nothing doesn't mean it's not adding uh adding weight into your work because mm. it is a space still and i hope that applies yearly <laughs> mm. I think like and also for like, like I think um, like adds a lot to the illustration. I'm just thinking about kind of the composition. If you're it's really detailed in the center and then slowly there's less and less detail. It's like kind of up to the user to kind of imagine the the rest of everything going on. But it also means that you can put it like online. It's going to look great in any kind of in many different aspect ratios. Like if you think about like mm -hmm. an Instagram tile or a story, you could easily place it in with the background and it will fit really well. But if you if you lock it into a certain aspect ratio you're almost going to have to you know create a new design for each kind of shape um but doing it this way you know keeps it more open more flexible at least yeah yeah so it's just like the pole the idea is like pole in the train do they have poles they do right um yeah, they do. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a while. I'll, I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> it's been a while since I'm in public transport, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we'll add more details like the hand reeling. It's, it's just really fun. Like, you just keep adding more things mm. that, not too overcrowded, but just the simple details to add story. Because I think that's a lot of it time when we have a story we kind of know what i want to add what i want to like this really cute thing because i have this friend who really like shiba inu dog and then she just put everything like all all these dogs like she she just finds a way to slip it inside her work and it's just really cute so it's just always a dog somewhere kind of like involved in each bit of yeah. her artwork yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I hope that yeah, it's really fun, like just showing my process and actually this is quite relaxing. <laughs> oh, it's been great, like um, having you share your process with us. Um, we should chat a little bit about next week. So like, um, I know there's like people from all around the world kind of watching. Um, we'll be going live yeah. at the on the same day. So in Australia, it's Thursday. Um, at 11 a.m. is mm -hmm. when we is when we go live. So uh, about an hour ago from now, if you want to join us in for part two, um, so that'll be next week. It is up on Behance, um, so you can check it out. But just so you know, um, we'll be here the same time um, next week, and we're going to be taking this illustration over into After Effects. I know there's been some people in chat yeah. that were talking about um, wanting to learn that um, or are currently working on projects. Um, so definitely come check out part two. Yeah, so this is another really nice thing. Like when you want to create like a few different, like for this hand railing, um, and you want an equal amount of space is that you can use this thing called a line and then you can distribute spacing and they're gonna have like the exact same spacing. So what's important is just you set, like this is the first, like this is the most left and this is the most right and then they will just and then you click all the elements you have group you have grouped them and then you just align them where did it like distribute spacing and then it will just distribute spacing for you which is really useful as well so you don't have to manually um measure things yeah no one wants to do that <laughs> yeah um how many more minutes do we have left now? Uh, so we've got about 50, we've got about 15 minutes left. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. We can always ask for more questions as well if you wanted to, if you wanted to do that. 
this is like this kind of poster that you see on trains where they advertise things. It's little details that I really like going to Japan. Like now I'm doing an ad for our Japan tourism, but um, the kind of care that they give in the simple things in their packaging, and I really like that. And interestingly, like even though they have so many beautiful things, but they also have really minimalist. I guess I really like Japan. Like I'm influenced a lot in Japanese way of designing things, and also mm. Scandinavian. Um, so that's why I was really surprised um, when some people like in Norway or in Sweden, like like how they find me, I, I never know. But they really like my stuff, and it's interesting mm. how, yeah. Hey, there was a question that maybe we maybe you can answer while while we're going mm -hmm. through. Let's see how we go. Um, how did you get mm -hmm. started in doing design for good work? That's oh, that's good work. Uh, so, like, I guess um, so. There's a question from Johanna. I'm just going to expand, Johanna. Let me know if I get this right. But um, like, uh, yeah. some of your work, some of your pieces, has been like for design for good good purposes, I suppose. Um, mm. So um, you mentioned the. Um, the illustration that was around um, around women um, and like obviously that's a yeah. thing for good like it's not necessarily like a straight up commercial project it's around empathy and you know um, you know a, a, a purposeful project I suppose um, and so how how would you how did you get that project um, or how did you meet that client um, for for care Australia case they kind of found me through one of my work um, but before I work where I am right now I work with this nonprofit called Help Me Feed so it was for helping women for breastfeeding um, according to the advice of the WHO I think one of the things that they mention is they really resonate with the way I draw characters it's like I can they can see that they have stories that they have empathy and I think that's um, oftentimes I find that a lot of nonprofits like they like when we are like the character shows like they're not generic like they sh they have personality they have life they have story they have background and um, by like when I because when I focus on that they really like and enjoy that because they don't just want to like they are not trying to they they want to appeal to people because like mm. they are trying to help life they are trying to help people like real people and i think um and I've, I've worked with other illustrators like as well who are really just great at doing that is they they what they do well is like they are able to show the humanity of the characters rather than just looking beautiful i think yeah cool um this is something that like even when i'm saying this like i i'm still learning on how to do that as well but that's what i've observed from other people um, and I'm really grateful, like, because of the opportunity that I have, is that I get to meet so many talented people who are really passionate about their craft, and I can learn so much. And for the first six, one year, I feel, even like until now, but the most valuable thing is to listen to people who are older than you because they have gone through things, and mm. and it's great to be able to just like get their wisdom. So you don't have to go through them to learn that. And that's why I always advise people to listen to podcasts, to talk to people. Um, sometimes it can be really terrifying to just like approach people, but I try to do that to reach out to people and genuinely ask because yeah, like you can always learn something from everyone that you meet, I think. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Very true. And hey, we we're chatting about Ben Marriott before the wonderful Ben Marriott and he's in chat. So it's lovely, lovely to see you there. <laughs> Is he really there? Yeah. Oh, hey Ben, we were talking about you early in the, in the chat. Good things though. All good things, for sure. Mm -hmm. if, if it's not good thing, it's fun Flynn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So you're talking about this is like, you know, Japan inspired kind of quirky kind of communication. Yeah, I they are really visuals and their ads. Oh, wow. Like, I don't know if you've seen like sometimes people like compile 
like ads and they're just really creative like they really go crazy with their mm. stuff and all of that um yeah i would love if only can speak japanese like i would love to work more like with them um and korea as well they have really beautiful stuff yeah absolutely so yeah and then we'll have like a warning sign here like for it to be to keep it more realistic like if i have more time usually like i add things like you know like break glass if there's emergency like even like adding those kind of small details like it's really fun like maybe people don't realize that but it's mm. it's something that you enjoy and just adding um these different things it, it makes it more real as well yeah yeah and would you um like search for photos of like i'm just trying to think about these posters like is it something that you're just kind of making up or something that you've seen before um or would you would you you know just google around and you know search for train posters or you know public transport communication like where would you get the inspiration for creating kind of what you would want these small details like for this one like it's something that i i haven't searched for reference but i know like what happens this is bad practice guys but like what people usually do actually is better which is like you have references so like the kind of poster the kind of things that you create are more rather than looking generic generic it looks more um it looks more real in the mm. sense that there is a design there is like a position of the letters and things like that so another thing that i try to do as well before is to use references more and i think some people ask um like i think there's this kind of notion that if you can draw everything from your head like you're this kind of genius that like if you use references that like you are not a real artist or something um but actually like everyone uses references and you have to especially when you're drawing human because mm. um unless you're really well first in human anatomy like you have to understand how the human body works and we have google and everything like that so when i say references you know we are copying but just collecting a few different references and then getting mm. an idea of what it looks like it's it's gonna change um the way your illustration look rather than looking generic because our memory can only hold kind of like the big idea of something but not really details that are oftentimes quite beautiful but we missed in our memory mm. so yeah it's really good thanks for the question because i don't use right like i haven't shown that i've used reference in this and johanna had a follow-up question like to that like where do you get your references from do you have any kind of go-to or is it mostly google and you go down go down a rabbit hole of whatever wherever you end up <laughs> um google for if like i want to look for like oh design of a train you know what what does a train look like that's where google is for but then like for different way of styles and work obviously pinterest behance um it's a really good place to start seeing how people can interpret reality and i think that's what make art and creative illustration really interesting is when you're not just drawing from real life but you're also adding a bit of a twist to that real the real part and then you make it your own you add your own personality you add your own magic to it um so and i that's really cool when you look at other artists like how do you think about such sceneries and that's i think that's something that you can't replicate mm. um but yeah google is for like when you want to look at how does what does a bread look like or what does what does a train like what does a train like the train a car because like, if it's just relying on my memory everything's just gonna look so so nor so gen so general it doesn't look any special yeah you you want I'm, i'm really bad with um cars and things like that because in my head it's just like this few cylinders um yeah mm. super cool i love this the timing's yeah, been super- been great we've only got a couple of minutes left so um Maybe we'll just check out this one. Maybe we'll just recap a little bit and we'll just kind of chat. Mm-hmm. Um, for those that sort of missed the beginning, we'll just kind of chat through some of the steps um, and then and then we'll say goodbye. So um, you started with these really geometric shapes. Um, I think you could show the outlines um, to show yeah. what they were, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and you started with the figure and just with like the same, the same weight, lots of circles and 
rectangles and rounding the corners as well. Mm -hmm. I'll stop talking and you can take over if you like, because (laughs) you're not the artist. No, no, it's fine. Like, um, I, so yeah, I started with pen tool and just rather than, so I focus just on the shapes rather than the colors. So when I finish all the, okay, I have, I have my building blocks and then I start adding colors that I have prepared. So I have like this color palette and then I just use the same color here and then just um, from the building block i start adding colors adding life and then i start adjusting things adding details like the blush using the amazing draw inside feature and yeah so i go from bigger picture and then i start working on the details at the end rather than starting from the details like and then i start on the sceneries and i add this i just create this and copy and pasted that obviously and same with this i just for the cloud, I just copy them and then just flip them to have them on the other side. So it's a very efficient way of working. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then just, like, yeah. just adding other things. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then just like, I like also another thing that I really like is adding like sparkles. Like this kind of, when you see like the ocean, like they have this kind of um, shimmering. And I think it's going to be really fun to play with when we're in After Effects next week. Awesome. And that's a good, that's a good segue yeah. for me. So thanks for setting me up. Yeah, we're going to be back same time, same time next week. We're going to be jumping into After Effects with the same illustration as well. Um, so you can, you yeah. can see, the, see the process, see the way Adrian has built um, this file and how we're going to bring it over into After Effects, add some um, sort of basic um, but really powerful um parallax effects um are we going to do a looping gif like are we going to be is it going to loop as well do you like i perfect think loop? i think so that's that's the plan that's yes the that's goal. the plan <laughs> it's got to be yeah perfect i'll, I'll right. show like how <laughs> that's what yeah like i uh, i'll be showing as well like how i set up my files like how does this go from illustrator to after effects so that because I think that's also important, like to set up your file so that it's easy to work with and um, creating compositions. Because it can be overwhelming at first, but actually, once you understand the logic behind like how we put things, like it gets easier from there. So yeah, so we'll be doing that. Um, so if you want to start, if you can create like this similar illustration in your own time, we can do the animation part together next week. So that'd be really cool. That'd be awesome. Oops. Okay, cool. Well, hey, yeah. we are just about out of time. Perfect. So, so there this we go. Is what we do today. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Really incredible. We could do so much, so much work, and also answer so many of the questions from chat. Uh, my questions as well. I'm just going to pop us over to our camera view while we're saying goodbye. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we could finally we could finally get it done. We've been chatting yeah. about this since June. Um, I know that chat's <laughs> had a great time as well. We've learned a lot from you as I knew we would. Um, and I just can't wait for next week. It's going to be so much fun. Thanks so much, Flynn, uh, for helping me as well. Yeah, it's really, it's really nice chatting with you as well. Thank you. And everyone. And okay. everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful uh, week and weekend. And thanks again, Adrian. Thanks again, Flynn. See you guys. <laughs>